what would I say to a younger me? I wouldn't have listened. So I would have just said, go and do it. Go and do it with all your guts and determination and, and don't stop until it's time to stop. There was nothing else in my life really apart from climbing. It did definitely move from kind of fun, carefree into kind of intense, dysfunctional. This is where I'm going and if you're not interested in it then thanks very much, it's been great but I'll, I'll carry on without you. I'd probably been in the Alps quite a lot so I had that kind of seasoned slightly arrogant kind of approach to the mountains. 21st of February 2012, headed out to the northeast face direct on the vert. We checked the weather, it was going to be bright, clear, but very, very cold. And a minus 30 kind of knocking on minus 35. And I guess that was where that arrogance kind of came in. It's going to be cold, but we can cope with it. And it just gets dark and cold and dark and cold. I remember getting tired. And you do, you get properly shut down. You're not there anymore. You're just functioning on a really basic kind of level where you just keep moving. Because keep moving is keeping alive. You're sort of not really awake, but you're not really asleep. We climb the route, and as we start making our way down and get out of the wind a bit, and the sun starts to kind of creep over the, over the range and put my axes in the snow and pulled off my gloves, and um, my fingers were frozen solid. I had four fingers on my left and two fingers on my right were rock hard all the way to the hand. And I was like, mate, I've fucked this. Look at these. And I remember the chopper coming in. Gone from like being quite capable just to like not being able to move. It was really strange, like that, all that courage. And I'm just suddenly like broken. So when I got home, I couldn't work, I couldn't do anything with them. I had to have showered for six months with plastic bags on my hands. You know, I had no money. Back in the Lake District with these sort of dog-eared hands, really working out what I'm going to do with myself. I wasn't good company. I don't think people really wanted to spend any time with me. I was kind of affronted by quite a lot of positivity sometimes. And I found that really difficult because I wasn't positive. Don't come up with your positivity. It, it feels shit and I need to be shit with it. I'm gonna get on with putting myself back together. What's important to me? What do I wanna do with myself? Why is my life so quiet? Why have I not got people in that interest about where I'm at? You know, it took an awful lot of time to answer those questions and some pretty dark places to go to to answer those questions. To take responsibility for my actions before my accident. To, to look at how I treated people in my life. I, you know, I've wasted my time. I've spent my time doing this stuff and it's for nothing. I've got nothing to show for it. That was a really terrifying thing to sit with. Fuck, I've wasted my time. It 
it's took me ages to, to change my view on that and to value what I have. Six years after and cutting my fingers off, like actually having them amputated, I'm still j just working stuff out now, I think. It's such a valuable thing, that, that, that journey that I've been on through my accident and out the other side of it. To live my life without that experience would have just cheapened it. That's the price, those four tips of my fingers. My passion for Mount environment is still there. It always will be. I think, um, and I think it's in a much more sustainable way, really. I don't need to get on those really steep, terrifying north faces anymore. And I don't want to invest that time. I don't really want to be that scared anymore. <laughs> but sitting on the ledge, looking out across the crag, feels to me like an ant on the back of a whale. Something so small and insignificant um, attached to something so large and such a greater power than you that could just shake you off in a second is an amazing feeling, that kind of insignificant feeling. And you're just graced with a passage through, on the back of a whale or up a mountain that could just shake you off at any, any moment. You know, I've been lucky enough to climb with people all over the world, you know, from ice climbs in Canada to, to kind of Patagonian peaks and ascents in the Alps and various other bits and pieces. You know, it's not the routes that you t tell people about, it's the people that I've done them with. They're the ones that actually are the trophies. It started off with this beautiful thing of wonder and this potential and it got hijacked and sidelined by climbing and it's really loud and noisy and all the associated faff and ego that's attached to that. Um, and then it's come back around to what it really is, which is these amazing landscapes that mean something to you and only you. And you share them with really important people in your life. Yeah, it's suddenly so much more kind of simple. My dear When you're feeling down When you feel all alone